The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome to everybody to another excellent edition of this Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach, do we go, dear friends? As always, we like to meet at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, 23, 36 and a half on the S&P cash volume 2.15 billion shares as the market just keeps creeping up. It looked to me over the last few days as money was coming out of bonds and moving back into the market. Uh, I've talked about Joe Granville several times on this show. Uh, and even a stop clock is right twice a day. He had a kind of a theory, and I've kind of put it together um, to where it's something usable for me, at least. But he always had this theory that everybody, uh, when the Titanic's sinking, always goes to the back of the ship. And the back of the ship is different things at different times. Uh, if everything's going to hell in a handbasket, then treasuries, of course, the back of the ship. But eventually people need money. They start selling them. And then even it goes down. So when you're looking at a market like this, I kind of look at it as, uh, especially looking at the way the dollar, let's get a current quote on this one here. Uh, U.S. dollar. What do we got here? 101.27. Um Certainly looks like it's going to go, it's back into this upper trading range, which extends to 104.50. My guess is that we should probably be back in the 102s before the end of this week, if not sooner. Uh, but, you know, you see kind of gold try to go here today. It is uh, what it is uh, up a buck now. It was up uh, much more. Um, certainly looks like everybody's looking for some place to find home, whether it's crude or bonds or all that stuff, and they run from one to another. And uh, eventually, there's only the back of the ship. And right now, the back of that ship are equities. A volume uh, still kind of lightish. Uh, to me, the more interesting thing is just how many stocks out here are trying to go higher and just have nothing in them. A handful of them, of course, will get all the love like Apple. Uh, they'll make higher highs. Uh, they may even get some fairly extensive volume and of course uh, being 10 percent of the nasdaq or 12 percent of the nasdaq handful of these stocks in the dow or in the uh, nasdaq can drive a market higher for a little bit more than you would think uh, but uh, seeing a lot of stuff out here that makes me think that we are very very close uh, to some kind of major inflection point and if we just kind of pulled back I think we probably could have gone much higher in this market. We would have come back on light volume that we continued this extension uh, continues to make me think that we see and have our and are seeing many blow off tops uh, in some of these stocks. Well, uh, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about one yesterday. We'll talk about maybe a few more today. But I uh, got lots of email here, I think uh, three or four, so we'll try to get to those. You can always email me at path at tfnn.com. You can post a message in the den at, uh, at any time. Of course, uh, email me at path at tfnn.com. Um, but uh, we always like to start with a little bit of historical perspective. The following takes oh, place between. I clicked on the wrong one. And three I, I clicked on the wrong one. What can you say? That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Well, you shouldn't have done it twice. I don't know why everybody was doing it. Anyway, uh, nice uh, pop on history. So on this day in 1946, the computer age is formally born as uh, Mr. John Mochi and Jay Eckert 
Jr. of the University of Pennsylvania. Moore School of Electrical Engineering uh, officially unveil their electronic numerical integrator and computer, the world's first large-scale electronic computer, consists of 30 separate uh, big cabinets uh, containing well over 17,000 vacuum tubes and weighing more than 30 tons. The ENAC astounds uh, the public onlookers by performing 5,000 additions and 300 multiplications per second. And when you were really working on, uh, for the military, uh, ballistic uh, formulas, this was a godsend for someone with a, a mortar or a 16-inch gun on a, on a battleship or any of these other things so that they could get a lot more precision in what was happening. In fact, uh, by, I think, 1948, they'd upgraded with uh, the help of this computer, uh, the Iowa's Battle Computer, which is a, a big battleship like the uh, Missouri, uh, to be so good uh, that uh, even into the time that it was decommissioned, which I think was 1990 or 91, uh, that they couldn't make the analog computers any better uh, than uh, with uh, actual electronic ones. So they just kept it uh, for the f maybe almost 50 years. Uh, so anyway, on this day in 1946, computers had come alive. And uh, fairly soon after that, they had hired many women uh, young girls to roller skate uh, up and down the aisles of these vacuum tubes and they didn't have a great idea how they were going to cool this thing so they just put in a ton of fans on one side of it that blow air through it and at night of course all these things would glow and moths and everything else uh, that surrounded the building uh, would get blown in through these fans and into the uh, tubes and the moths sometimes would get stuck uh, below tubes and short out a tube. And uh, that's why computer errors are known as bugs. Because literally, in the first computer, that's what they were. They were moths and bugs that would get in and short out an individual tube. The tube would have to be replaced. And their job was to uh, constantly roller skate up and down looking for tubes that had gone bad or uh, ones that had uh, electrified a small insect on this day in 1946. After the bell tonight, we've got Agilent Technologies, we've got American International Group, we've got FANG, which is Diamondback Energy, we've got Fossil Group, uh, which has been hammered over the last year and a half, and uh, Potbelly, another one that's been hammered, but a recent IPO. Um, do, 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 do. What else do we have out here? Uh, Steve Rhodes asked me for a percentage. I don't have that yet. I'll probably do it tonight. It's just a visual scan of my uh, of uh, the ones that I've been waiting for. Uh, and we'll look at a few more of those today. Uh, but we've been going through them a few more. But uh, went through some of them today. Just not that many out here really giving um, a sign of strength back here at the highs. Oh, we're going to break. I will get to your emails when we come back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey! Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we're going to go to our emails, and it's Dan in Clearwater wants to know, but he's actually in Lutes today for some reason. Uh, sorry to hear that. There are lo uh, lotions and ointments for that. Anyway, IBB, a uh, question about whether or not this is a short here today. I mean, you got to hate the volume uh, since uh, the 31st of January on this. It's been up on a lighter and lighter volume. Uh, you have a nice gap up to the 294.36 area. You know, could you pull the trigger here? You probably could. I like the uh, 294 area uh, a little bit better. Uh, everything on this basically says uh, light volume move back up into this previous high. Um, you're, you know, you're always one tweet away from a monster downside uh, on this one. Uh, I don't see anything on a midterm on a shorter term of course you're looking at this previous high uh, of january 10th that had 1.57 million shares and we have 788 is this all you get could be um you could roll over tomorrow your odds are a little better at 294 but again probably looking for some kind of reversal in the general market uh, or a Hail Mary tweet uh, from uh, the tweetster himself. Yeah, if you could just uh, know when Donald was going to tweet about biotechs, this would be a great trade. But uh, you don't know, and that is the problem. Um, what else we have out there? I, all I could say is your odds are better. It's setting up. Uh, for a move. Um, I think it's going to come back here and test the 246.71. Let's take a look at BIIB first. This one's been giving more signals out here. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the retracements. Now, this one I kind of like a little bit better uh, in the setup. 
for this because you got nice confluence from uh, what is that 286, yeah 286. Let's call it 287 uh, to 289. So you got a little bit more out of that one, but most of these things are kind of lining up that way. In fact, let's do this. Let's set that as the focus number. Set this as the next A. And then we'll set uh, this as the A and the next B after that. That may make it a little clearer out here of what I'm looking for. Let me zoom in too so you can see. But you've got some confluence levels that would probably be a lot better where I'm not going to be surprised to see the market turn down and biotech still go up a little bit. It's heavily shorted. Tend to run the shorts in this thing before the market, or even after the market turns. So do not be surprised to see this thing, even in a down market, go a little bit higher. But I would want to be at that 290 level to pull the trigger probably on the BIIB for the IBB. So well, you got five bucks out of that. Could you get it tomorrow? Um, could be. Uh, and it could go against the general market, which I would not be surprised ab about. Anyway, we're up eight points in the S&P cash volume, 2.24 billion shares as we uh, speak now. So that's one of the questions. Another question, uh, integrated circuit stocks, CAMT. And I don't know enough about this one. The question is, I'm looking along. Uh, 338 level. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly where you would want to be, wants to buy it at 338. And, you know, I think the bottom of that candle of the 1st of February, uh, what's the low there? Um, uh, closes $3.63. That's probably going to be where you get it. I don't know if you're going to get 340 on it. 360. Uh, well, is that, what is the low? 363? Oh, that was the close. Excuse me, the low, 338. Ah, I see where you're looking at now. So yeah, that would be the, that would be that candle and support area where this thing went sideways for a number of days before it broke and went higher. So uh, yeah, I do like that one. Um, I'm just thinking though, if this market pulls back at all, uh, that there's going to be some significant time frame damage in the markets now. Uh, we had the opportunity to come back on a light volume pullback. Uh, now we're getting into kind of danger area uh, where literally uh, the markets can stall out and that would be the worst part of that. Uh, let's take a look and see some of these other ones. Uh, as we said, a lot of stocks testing highs with light volume. Now to the IBB thing, uh, maybe even a better looking uh, chart out here for being short would be Bluebird Bio. Uh, this one's, again, a very nice test of the December 6th high that had 2.26 million shares uh, with, uh, what, 400,000 some odd today, a little less than 500,000. So we're going into this with about 25% of the volume. Uh, the last leg off January 3rd had very light volume. Even if you compare it to the December 6th uh, high, back into that leg, there wasn't much. Um, so, and especially if you compare it against the November 3rd leg all the way up to the December 6th leg, which had all the energy, this is exactly what you're looking at. Um, but, you know, to me, this looks like in a bigger trading range of about 61 bucks up to this $80 level. Now, on the high side here, you're looking at a gap. Uh, this is one of these double gaps, and it's come back to it. So I certainly like uh, this is a good signal that the IBB is kind of hit highs out here with, um, you know, some strong volume down from September 19th down to that November 3rd low. And then all the way back up here to the uh, high on the 6th of December, only to retest now with incredibly light volume. So, and again, going back into this huge gap down on Bluebird, which is the uh, 7th of December 2015 that came down on 10 million shares. So you got a big supply line back here, uh, all the way back up. So if you were going to pull the trigger, 
you're probably, I think you're within 24 hours of the IBB uh, if you wanted to pull the trigger, but probably not right now. At least I'm not right now. I would like some kind of short squeeze like I've seen in many other stocks today that just don't really go anywhere, really show up with a lot of volume uh, and or fade before the end of the day. So uh, well, that's kind of it there. I've got a um, couple shorts I added, I think, yesterday or the day before. Added a couple more today. So I am fairly bearish out here with very tight stops. Uh, it's it's probably a lot more common than people would think to see markets go up on no volume until they actually bust. Um, because uh, of greed, it is uh, tougher to find the top than the bottom. Fear seems to be a lot easier and clearer signals on the boat, on the lows. We're probably fairly close. We'll be back after this. Give me some more emails. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Don't call from Lutz. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we've got a uh, question about whether or not you could buy the socks, which is the triple bear on semiconductors. Um, you know, you probably, you probably are a day, maybe a day and a half away from this one rolling down, if I am correct. So I think there are why there's some sectors, maybe even the general market might move down a little bit. 
Uh, these have been so uh, smashed by people thinking that that uh, they want to buy any dip that you still may see one more move. Now, the downside is, if I'm right, what we're probably going to do is just gap down. It's not going to give anybody a chance to get in short. Um, so you might go sideways for a couple of days, Thursday, Friday, even maybe next Monday, you end up with a big gap down. And the problem is, if you're not in these positions before the close, you probably don't get them. But, you know, when you get the well, so many stocks doing what they're doing out here, you know, you you have a, always that 50 50 chance where it closes down, you know, in this case, maybe uh, it goes down 25 cents. And that's probably 75% of the time. And the 25% of the time you open at 10 bucks. And that is always the problem with getting into these at such extreme levels in the market and extreme stresses in the market. So I uh, keep on that. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. So we talked about CMAT. Uh, look at a, um, da, 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 what else do we have? So anyway, uh, yeah, I don't see anything else in there. We'll look through some of the other stocks I've got, but give me a call at 877-927-6648. The Cooper companies, we talked about this one yesterday, uh, finding up here at its highs and what this thing is doing. Uh, 190. 99 was the uh, September 20th high that had 650,000 shares. We got into it with half the volume, tried to spike it again. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about out here today. And that is 142,000 shares, even lighter than a few days ago. If these things start rolling down, uh, that's where you, a lot of times you just gap down on these very light tests of previous highs. It makes me think maybe the market will do the same. It may not do it until Monday, uh, but I don't think there's a lot of upside risk, um, but certainly a lot of downside risk. Uh, speaking of that kind of risk, uh, as we look into longer term charts, just some stuff I do not like, which is Cisco Systems uh, had a 55 million share high on September 2nd of 2016 at 3169, went through it rolled over almost instantly on November 16th with 27 million shares. Uh, got into it yesterday with 26 million shares. Uh, today, we've got about 15 million shares. And that's where I'm thinking maybe one more day or so on some of these uh, big uh, tech hardware makers uh, to roll back over and, and back down would give you a little bit uh, more uh, to take a look at. I don't see anything in earnings coming up, though, that really would spook everybody. Uh, one of the other things that I like out here is a sign of a fairly big top is 23 million shares in the EEM, which is the emerging markets. Normally, uh, when we get a cold, the third world gets Ebola uh, on steroids. And that's the September 22nd high in the EEM comes in at 123 million shares. Uh, in the last couple of days, uh, what do we've had? Uh, 38 million shares, 34 million shares. Today, a little doji out here on 44 million shares. Uh, and that is a big, big gap that goes back all the way, as we've said before, to some of these huge gap down days. In this case, uh, go back to the July 6th, uh, July 7th, July 8th um, days. And this kind of, you had your three gaps. So you want to look at that. And then you notice all those gaps get filled, kind of comes back up to the first gap. And then the whole thing kind of rolls back over. And that's not an uncommon pattern for when the market really decides to just throw up all over its shoes. And unfortunately, the way we've been going uh, is... Uh, uh, what, do, what do they call it? Euphoric. Let me put it that way. Or at least I think it's euphoric. I don't know how you put calipers around it, but from my experience, I find it euphoric. Uh, Equinix, which is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, a big credit card company deal that uh, one of these guys that uh, if they ever put anything wrong in there, uh, always uh, to 
Oh, no, this is a real estate investment trust. This isn't the one I was thinking about. Sorry. Never mind. Uh, Equinix, uh, light volume top out here in this one. July 11, 2016, 387. 11 goes into it, has broken it. Uh, and that's where I'm saying some of these things out here are starting to give some fairly decent signals. Today, we're starting to get the signal on that one, especially if you're looking at something like I do, which is this pattern of being over a nine day or a three by three displaced moving average. And this is a very good example. And it looks like we're getting confirmation on this one today. Uh, and what you have is something like 10 to 15 days above uh, the three by three displaced moving average, few days below it, maybe three to seven, a couple of days back above it, and the next close below it if you think that the stock or, or equity is weak. Now, you've got a nice sign of a high. Uh, you have 900,000 shares compared to 600,000 shares. So you're coming in with much lighter volume back into another top. Uh, and this nice little move up here that had a nice run until, when was that? Uh, we'll look at it here. This thing closed back below uh, on the 1st of February. Uh, now it kind of bounces around a little bit, gets back over, fails, and closes. A lot of times these first couple of days you get light volume. By about the third or fourth day, you should have volume if this thing does uh, exist and figure that you're back down to maybe 370 on this fairly quickly. I think that's probably, uh, yeah, 372 is the October 24th high. That would give you a good indication of a bigger move in the real estate sector. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. We'll go through them. Again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com or put messages in the den. FIS. Okay. Fidelity National Information Services. Uh, another one, as we said, uh, a lot of these uh, coming in with lighter volume. Now, this one had a real spike up to the top high and again has not gotten that kind of volume. September 6th, this spiked to 81.11 with 5.7 million shares, got into it with 4.6 million shares. So, this is not the weakest of the bunch. But again, a lot of stocks that have made highs, volume's kind of starting to wane on these. Could you get one more move on this? You probably could. I think there's better fish in the sea. But again, this is just uh, me going through a lot of stocks showing that we are testing previous highs on lighter volume. And the most unambiguous signal in the market is that. How do you fight it? You really don't. We'll be back after this. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. 
Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, look at HCA Holdings. Uh, another one up here testing a uh, fairly light volume. And, of course, uh, I have an option in the art of timing and trade charts that looks for the highest volume with in one half a percent of the high. So anytime you know you get fairly close up here, I'm looking for the maximum volume. Even if it was just a penny less the day before, I want to look at that kind of volume as it comes back in. Uh, but uh, kind of interesting to see 4 million shares on uh, April 28 at 83.69 on HCA. And of course, uh, 1.9 million shares is the best we've been able to do uh, back in these highs with a, within a half a percent. Today, about 1.1 million shares. So up at highs without a lot of volume, we're going to need literally the tax plan tomorrow or the next few days for these things not to start rolling over, in my opinion, anyway. Um, let's see what else we have out here. Uh, let's see, a few more. Uh, another one out here, Icon PLC, ICLR is a symbol on this one. And you're back up into the 85.74 high of October 24th. Uh, that had 1.15 million shares. Got into it with a whopping 276,000 shares. So uh, back up again, so many of these stocks, especially these stocks that are more expensive, i.e., uh, you know, not $30 stocks, but 80, 100, $400 stocks that have very little if any volume back up at these previous highs. IDCC, um, InterDigital, this thing kind of spiked uh, back on the 15th of December. Uh, did so with 2 million shares and really hasn't been able to go through that with much out here. My guess is this would come back to about 85 bucks if it rolls over here. Uh, IEMG, here's another one coming up against some fairly um long-term resistance levels again why i think that it would be kind of logical for the market to pull back here uh if not for just being in so few stocks that are driving the entire market um this is the uh, emerging market investable market index which is kind of like some of the other ones but they're all kind of saying the same thing out here that is the, the real destruction started back on July 6 in 2015, when these things fell apart, they gapped down with a lot of volume uh, relatively. Uh, this thing really went back higher uh, on September 22nd, just ran every uh, person out up to September 22nd high that had 12.4 million shares. Uh, back into it with about half of that over the last day, 5.5 million shares today. About the same, maybe a little bit more volume, but a nice little doji hanging out here. 
Could you get a little bit more out of here? Could you get 50 cents? You possibly could, but uh, I don't know. I just see so much weakness in third world out there that it doesn't make me feel real good. We talked about this one, I think, yesterday. Um, and again, it's making a fairly clear signal pulling back into the trading range. That's Jabel Circuits, the manufacturer, uh, the uh, what we said, the assembler of electronics. So that'll give you kind of a good idea of what business they're in. Didn't like the energy other than the gap back up. And that gap back up was on the 16th of December on earnings. Did so on 16, you know, it's called 17 million shares. It's kind of come back up here, finally hit that high. That high had 1.3 million shares compared to the 2.8 million shares of the December 4th, 15th high at the same level. You've got a double gap out here, and I would suspect more than likely, this is coming back to 22.25. So look at that as kind of uh, any kind of big rollover, uh, which would be a close below a three by three displaced moving average or a uh, nine day moving average. Let's, let's take see how much difference there is. There's not generally a lot. Um, so let's go make that one nine and make that one zero. So we can make it fairly easy. Okay. Um, this would need to close back about 2450. And a break below 2450 would suggest it's going to 2250. And uh, I don't think that that would be too hard. Uh, but again, like no confirmation yet. You need a little bit more down to say that there's some kind of weakness out here. JDCom, I think another one we brought up yesterday. Uh, which is another test on light volume and looking like it's starting to get ready to confirm in the next day. Uh, the $29.24 high of October 4th, 30 million shares comes in with 13.8 uh, million shares. A little pullback into that range today pretty much confirms the top. Now, one of the things I like and confirming the top is you get a huge move with lots of energy like you did in this June 16th low to the October 4th high. And you get a lot of energy. Man, the thing comes off like a rocket. Pulls back with light energy, which means you have a good chance of testing, retesting that high again in ABC. You pretty much go to a complete ABC, which is back up to the previous high again. Maybe a little light one. And the energy just, you know, you get a nice pop gap up on this one, which is on the 15th of November. But then the thing just goes sideways and goes up on literally very light volume, and especially the last few days up here. This is the kind of stuff that you get in kind of bubble top formations, which is just light volume, just a little higher each day, just a little higher each day. And then someone slams the door, and the souffle does fall. So keep a look at that one. That's JD.com. Uh, Lending Club. Uh, this one... Not a shortable stock, but certainly we talked about it yesterday, giving a fairly clear signal that I think uh, this thing is probably about as good as it can, is going to get. All kinds of legal, CEO, um, zombies, uh, Ebola, just about everything that could go wrong with a company uh, kind of uh, putting the stink, bad stink and juju on a company uh, lending club has have and that's uh, back on the may 9th 2016th gap down that happened on 96 million shares you go into the low that low's never really been tested at 33 dollars and 44 cents i suspect that you could get that you get a lot of energy and short covering off the bottom back up to six dollars 58 cents which is the september 19th high and of course you pull back you go up you bang against this uh, mid to uh, upper three quarters of the $6 range. Uh, and finally kind of uh, finish this gap down. Uh, pretty good idea. But, uh, you know, you got the first one at 15 million shares. This one came in at 14.5 million shares. Um, you know, if I had bought this thing off the lows or even bought it off the October 31st low, you're in a double gap out here. That gap had monstrous 96 million shares. Everybody and their dog is hoping to get their cash back. All the easy money is over. And uh, I would be uh, a seller right here if I was long 
Of course, no way I'm shorting a $6 stock. Anyway, we're coming back after this short timeout. Uh, Tom O'Brien for the next two hours. Andy Heck to round up the day. Our, uh, what do they call them? Number four at bat. Cleanup hitter. Andy Heck at, four, uh, at five. We'll be back after this. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're going to look at a few more stocks. But like I said, I got a lot of stocks out here that are kind of making some signals. And... Uh, We'll just go through a few more of them before the end of the day. But, uh, you know, again, kind of a, a bigger uh, view, kind of like going into and looking at all 30 stocks in the Dow. Just how many stocks out there are testing some kind of big uh, inflection point with lighter volume. LifePoint Hospitals gap down on 3 million shares back on July 29th in 2016. Got back up uh, in that area on October 30, uh, 21st with half a million shares and failed. Went back and actually made even a lower low uh, back here to the uh, November 9th, uh, 11th low and came all the way back up here. But again, energy has been poor. You had some nice volume down at the lows, which is uh, back to 5280. Back up to this gap of 3 million shares and today 250,000 shares. Now, this gap is like we've been talking about, a double gap. 
And those are pretty good uh, places uh, to uh, actually put on and off a trade. Uh, I'd need more to find out if I wanted to short this company, but the first gap goes back to February 29th of 2016. And so you've got kind of a nice little line out here that gives you fairly decent risk reward. I kind of like stocks with a little more volume, but I think you're starting to get the gist of why I think that there's some kind of big inflection point out here. Live Nation, this one's been a day trade vehicle for a while, LYV. Uh, looking at this one, a little shorter time frame, November 14th, 2.85 million shares. Uh, 2904 was that one. You went through it with 1.38 million shares. So, uh, what, half the volume? A little less than half the volume. What you want is to see this close back below 2904, which is a valid sell signal. Energy on this last move up from December 19th is off by about 30%. Uh, compared to the move down from November 14th. So you got kind of just about everything you like, except maybe for me, which is a stock over 30 bucks. Uh, but uh, this one has been a perennial one. Again, you want to check all these stocks for uh, how short they are. But generally, uh, at this point, eh, if they've been going up for a while, you probably had a lot of those shorts bail out. Uh, and that's kind of what you're looking for today is reversal signals in a lot of these stocks that have squeezed the shorts out one more time. But at this point, you got no volume. Uh, if you had volume, then sometimes you have people shorting it. But no volume, eh, probably not a lot of people pulling the trigger short. And gives you, you know, a little bit of room on the downside to start looking at it. Some of the bigger stocks out here, uh, including stocks like SAP, uh, the Microsoft of Germany uh, up uh, and lighter volume. Now, I probably wouldn't pull the trigger on this one, uh, but same kind of thing. Not a lot of energy back up to the top and lighter volume pulling back into the trading range today. September 22nd, 1.82 million shares. He had 1.5 million shares yesterday, and this thing is pulling back. There are probably some better ones out here. The bigger the caps, the more that these stocks look like they're making uh, some kind of sig uh, significant highs, uh, but uh, some of those mid-cap stocks testing with far lighter volume in those uh, are probably where I would be looking. A lot of stocks that aren't being talked about every single day, let me put it that way. Uh, Splunk, another one that looks rather interesting. We talked about this one. Um, and we're not going to have time for it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Nice gap down, though. 10 million shares got into it with a couple of days ago. Uh, 1.2 million shares so got to be fairly uh, clear out there that we are testing a lot of inflection points on lighter volume in the meantime sell when you can not when you have to and we'll see you here tomorrow same bad channel same bad time Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.